Ah, good morning, young people. Hope all is well. Welcome to another edition of COVID-19 Baptist Church and our virtual chapel. Uh, virtual chapel. Uh, yep, that's what it is. That's what it's been. And uh, hope all is well. Uh, I know I've seen quite a few of you on Zoom. And uh, it's good to see you. Stay encouraged. Do the right thing. Continue to do your work. Uh, I know some of you guys are feeling a little overwhelmed, but uh, here's the key. Ready? If you eat the elephant one bite at a time, all right, and you don't wait to the last minute to try to get, uh, you know, all your assignments done at one time, uh, you'll you'll do a much better job. And as you get a little older, things are just going to kind of be what they be. As you get older, your responsibilities, they're going to continue to increase, not decrease. Amen. So now is the opportunity for you to get right uh, as far as your perspective and your, rather, this is a better word, your priorities, all right? So uh, uh, right now you got schoolwork, and so you need to have a plan for that. Um, you need to make sure that uh, you get your ducks in a row, uh, amen? All right, so let's get into the message. Uh, I'm going to try to try to touch on conspiracy, amen? Interesting, huh? Uh, conspiracy and uh, what the Bible might say about that and uh, just to give you heads up that uh, the word conspiracy is a Bible word all right so uh, I know that, that, that what happens is that the <clears throat> the world and the news media and Hollywood you know they they march to uh, the beat of the same drum right so they're going to the left and uh, you as a Christian, you will be going opposite from the way the world works, right? First um, John chapter chapter 4 verse 5 says, uh, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. So there's two, two distinct camps that God identifies, right? It's the world and it's the Christian. Amen. It's the way the world does certain things, and it's the way the Christian does certain things. All right, so before we continue, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Thank you for what he's done for us, what he is doing for us. Uh, pray that you touch the hearts of these young people and or whoever's listening. So we plead the blood on this. Pray that you come soon. Please keep a hedge of protection about your, your crew. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... Uh, if you don't subscribe, though, to the world's um, ideology, rather their lifestyle or their philosophy or their quote-unquote science, right, and they'll try to prove a reason with them, you know, they'll label you a bigot. They use uh, terms like hate monger or homophobe or xenophobe or you're nuts or you're crazy, amen, you're insensitive, narrow-minded, amen, they may even use terms like, oh, you Christians are a bunch of hicks, and then they'll start throwing this stuff out you, to you, and, and they're like, well, you're a bunch of conspiracy theory theorists thinking all this stuff is going on, and, and uh, well, uh, the Bible is very clear that there are things going on behind the scenes that you may not be privy to, um, that's why it's so very important as a Christian that you get in your Bible. John chapter 15 verse 19 says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Right? Birds of a feather flock together. But because ye are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Amen? And, and what you need to do as a Christian, get, get, gri get, get, get a grip, amen, or an understanding or acknowledge the fact that the day you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, things were different, amen? You were on one side, now you were on the other side. And uh, if you believe your Bible, that's a, a, a choice of yours. You desired to want to do the right thing. You understood the fact that you were lost. You understood the fact that you needed Jesus Christ. You either heard it through the preaching or you heard it uh, <clears throat> in school or, or, or your parents may have brought that up. Maybe you have a... a, a a set of grandparents, amen, that love the Lord, and they want the best for their grandkids, and they had told you about, uh, amen, Jesus Christ, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Uh, the problem that you're going to have is that you get this kind of mixed conflict, and so I'm going to live in the world, but I'm going to also trust Jesus Christ, and I'm going to follow what he has to say, 
And the Bible is very clear, you can't serve, you can't serve two masters. So you gotta make a choice. Right? Choose this day whom ye will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And if you haven't made that level of commitment yet, uh, you need to go ahead and do that. Otherwise, your Christianity is going to be nothing but a bunch of mixed messages, right? Uh, you can't go left and right at the same time. You can't go up and down at the same time. But but Christians in America, especially in America, because we're, 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 we're saturated with so many different things, right? With the cell phones and with the internet and the Xboxes and the Playstations. And, and, and again, I've said this a million times. If you're a part of my class, if, if, if you understand you know, where we're coming from, God, God gave you 24 hours. And, and he knows that there are certain things that you're going to do and you need to eat and you need to sleep. You need to go to school and there's time for yourself. You know, you can, you can, there's nothing wrong with watching television. There's nothing wrong with playing video games. Just make sure that you keep the right uh, priority and that know that there has to be a time in your day that you, you, you spend with Jesus Christ. If you're saved, if you're a Christian, amen, there should be a time somewhere in that day. I, I would tell you the best part of it is the is the first part. Um, that that you spend with Jesus Christ and you get along with his word. Amen. Uh, I thank God for my wife. She loves Jesus Christ. And uh, every moment that we have opportunities, we read together. And if there are situations that we can't read together, we read, though. My wife reads. My daughter, Rose, she reads. Uh, and I read. And I have to as a Christian. Amen. All right. So let's get back to this. We're talking about conspiracy, right? Okay. So uh, Genesis chapter 37, verse 8. Genesis chapter 37, verse 18. The Bible says, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near, it's talking about Joseph, by the way. When, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Verse 18. You see that word conspired? Right. So that's, that's a Bible word. Right. Look at verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer coming. And uh, how does that affect you? All right, so so out of all the brothers there, they recognized that there was something different about Joseph. And if any man be in Christ, the Bible said, Paul talking, he says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, matter of fact, that Bible calls you a pilgrim. He also calls you a peculiar people. So this is, this is the truth about Christianity. Uh, you're going to be different than other people. And like you see here, they call David, or rather Joseph, sorry. They call Joseph, oh, here comes that dreamer, right? And this is what you're going to experience as a Christian, right, if you're doing right. Well, here comes so-and-so, man, and, and, and they think that they're, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Holier Than Thou or Sister Holier Than Thou. Yeah, look, understand this about Christianity. Understand this about life. The people that are going to like you and love you, they're going to like you and love you no matter what you do. Those people that don't, no matter what you do, it don't matter if you decide you're going to try to help them out with their mortgage payment or their car payment, they're going to like you no matter what you do. So here, here's, the, here's the key, right, to, 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 success, to a successful Christianity, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ already told you, man, that world, they don't like you. They don't love you. They, 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 what does the Bible say? Uh, if you are of the world, the world would love his own. The world, the world loves himself. That's, that's, that's that concept. The birds of a feather flock together. Just understand the fact that there are going to be people that don't like you. But, but here's the reality of it too. It's not that they don't like you as far as your Christianity is concerned. It's that they don't like the person who saved you, amen, or the God that created the planet, amen. They, they uh they don't like him. So so the real issue isn't necessarily you, although they're the you are the person that they see, right? You're the ambassador, right? You're Bob Paul says do the work of an evangelist. So you're the one with the message, amen. You're the dreamer, amen. That's a good type of a Christian in the book of Genesis speaking of Joseph. And so they're gonna conspire. They're not gonna they're not gonna appreciate what you bring to the table. If the heart ain't right, it don't matter what you do with them. So so what's the plan? What's what what do you do? Well, you either quit and go back and act like they are and go back to the world and just give up or just recognize the fact that God Almighty loved you enough to die for you, right? He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm going to help you out and keep moving with him. 
my my recommendation to you, man, I've been saved for over 30 years, brother, sister. And yeah, it gets tough, but life is tough. Have you ever been called names? Yeah, you have. Have people ever talked about you? Yeah, they have. And I would tell you this, most of the time when they talk about you, it ain't because of your Christianity. It's sad, huh? If they're going to talk about you, if there are people that are going to see you from afar off and they know you're coming, right? And, uh-oh, here comes so-and-so. Then, man, wouldn't it be best that if you're going to get persecuted as, as a person or you're going to be made fun of as a person, why, well, I mean, w- w- wouldn't you rather it be for the right reason? Wouldn't you rather it be because you're taking a stand when the entire group goes this way and you just say, you know what, I- I'm-, I'm not going to do that. Amen. And, and, and the entire crews and they're conspiring. Amen. They're going to get caught up into this and they're going to try this and they're going to go over here. And, you know, mom, dad ain't going to be home at that time. So, you know, and, and, and you make that call and say, you know what? Today's not that day, guys. I, I appreciate you. I thank you for the invite, but you know, I'm not interested. Verse 19. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. And, and, and here's the deal. Look at verse 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Amen? And it goes to show you they're just a bunch of liars. Amen? There is a group of people, that world, that unsaved group of people, they don't care anything for you as a Christian. Amen? And the Bible used the word, they conspired. It's a conspiracy. And so, you know, the world, especially with this coronavirus, if you're online, you know, there there are these certain individuals saying that, you know, there's a whole lot going on and a whole lot going on than, than what meets the eye. And yeah, I, I get that. That's that's Bible. The word conspiracy shows up 10 times in your Bible. The word conspiracy shows up 10 times, nine times in the Old Testament, one time in the New Testament. The word conspire, like you read in Genesis 37, shows up 19 times. So are there conspiracies? Yeah. Is a conspiracy a Bible? Yeah, it's a Bible deal. So whether or not they 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 don't appreciate what you bring to the table and they call you crazy and they call you nuts and you're a conspiracy theory theorist, well, the word conspiracy shows up in your Bible. That's a Bible deal. Uh, the word conspiracy, by definition, uh, is a combination of men for an evil for an evil purpose, in agreement between uh, two or more persons to commit some kind of crime. In concert, particularly a combination to commit treason or excite sedition or insurrection against the government of a state. It's it's a plot, right? And 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 that Bible says, yeah, there are all sorts of different plots and there's schemes and whatnot. And 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 you got to be aware of the fact that, yeah, well, as a Bible believer, I know that uh, the the first plot in your Bible was in in Isaiah chapter 14. That was when uh, Lucifer decided he was going to ascend and put his throne above the Most High. There are things going on behind the scene that you don't understand, right? And so that's why it's so very important that you recognize that God Almighty is either in control or he's not. You either got a God in heaven that you can go to and take your troubles to, casting all your cares, the Bible says, uh, casting all your cares on him, for he careth for you. Either there's a God in heaven that knows that and there's situations going on in the planet and the government and whatnot, or, or, or you don't, and you don't understand. Or he, there is no God, and then you're just left to yourself to try to figure things out. All right, if you have your Bible, look at Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 9. And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of, of Jerusalem. Verse uh, 9, the Lord said, so that's God Almighty telling Jeremiah, hey man, guess what? You know, uh, there is a conspiracy over there. And how cool is it to be saved? Well, well, as a saved person, you have much more information than what the typical unsaved person has. As far as life is concerned about things that are going on in the world, uh, the Bible says of those unsaved people, they're dead in trespasses and sin. You know what they are? They're in darkness. Psalm chapter 119 Verse 130 says, The entrance of thy word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. The entrance of thy word, so so I tell you, and, and, and your folks tell you, amen, get in the book. 
Why? Because this world is, right, full of darkness. And what this Bible provides is light. You see the difference? Darkness. And so we say, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. And when you open this book and the Holy Spirit that saved you is inside of you, it's the same Holy Spirit that wrote this book. And you know what he does? He guides and directs you. He shows you different things that are going on in the world, all the craziness and, and do you wear a mask and, and what about this and social separation and, and what about the government and Donald Trump and, and what about Obama and what about the Clintons and different things going on and Bill Gates and and, and, and Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and what about the aliens and, and what about all these different things? Well, if you have a Bible... You know, again, while the whole world's running around like a chicken with their head cut off uh, by design, that's not supposed to be you if you're saved. God didn't give you the spirit of fear. That's what Paul said. He gave you the power and and, and of a sound, the spirit of, he gave you power and, and a sound mind. Amen? So when everybody's running around with no answers, there's no answers. He say, well, 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 what do we do with, uh, you know, all the information that's coming out and, and, and whatnot? You know, those, those experts, they don't, they don't know what's going on. They're not sure. One minute they're telling you this, the next minute they're telling you that. So what do you do? You pray about it. As a Christian, you, you have the ability to be able to ask God to try to help you and guide you and direct you and, 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 and give you peace of mind about, about what's going on. And I, I, I thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank God for being saved. Uh, the best thing I ever did in my life was to trust Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I was 22 years old. Amen? I grew up in Dade County. I got caught up in all the foolishness and the, and the, and the crazy stuff that that uh, that went on uh, around here. And I'm going to tell you this. There ain't nothing for you in Dade County. Outside of Jesus Christ, outside of following Him, outside of getting rooted and grounded in the Word of God, there ain't nothing going on in this life. Right? It's just the flesh. And, and at the end of the day, I'm telling you, it ain't going to give you any joy. Even the Rolling Stones knew that. You know what the Rolling Stones saying? When I was a kid, I remember listening to songs like that saying, I can't get no satisfaction. There ain't no satisfaction in this world. Look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Let's see, Mark chapter 6, and look at verse uh, uh, 45. Mark chapter 6, verse 45. Mark chapter 6, verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get in the ship, and to go on the other side before unto Bethesda, while he sent away the people. All right, so let me tell you about your Christianity real quick. Your Christianity is like an underwood journey, right? So Hollywood knows that. So you got the, um, you got uh, the Hobbit, and you got uh, Wizard of Oz, and you got uh, Lord of the Rings, and they're like these journeys, right? All right. So, so verse forty-five, right? And you get saved uh, uh, straightway. He constrained his disciples to get into the ship. The ship there is the type of Jesus Christ. So when you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're, you're, Paul says you're in Christ, right? So you get in the boat. So Noah, uh, Genesis chapter 6, he built an ark, right? In order for the world to be saved from the coming catastrophe, what they have to do? They had to get in the ark, right? So they got in the ship, verse 46. And when they had sent, uh, when he had sent them away, uh, he departed unto the mountain to pray. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he left, right? Is the Lord Jesus Christ here right now? He's not. Where is he? He went up. He resurrected, amen, and contrary to Mormon theology where they say Jesus Christ uh, rose up from the dead and then he went, to the, uh, he went to South America. Yeah, that ain't Bible, man. Anyway, that's another gospel. Uh, that's another message. All right, verse 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, verse 47, the ship was in the midst of the sea. And he alone, and he alone on the land, verse 48, and he saw them toiling and rowing, uh, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking unto the sea, uh, that he would pass them by. But when they had saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed uh, he had been a spirit and cried out. All right, look at verse 46, 48, I'm sorry, 48. 
See what the Bible says, and he saw them toiling and rowing. Can, can I tell you that, 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 that Jesus Christ sees, you know, some of the troubles that you're going through right now? He sees everything that you're doing. And just like here, the disciples, amen, uh, there are all sorts of crazy things that might be going on in life, right? You have uh, loved ones that are passing away. You have uh, challenges trying to get all your assignments done and, and, and possibly some issues with the family and whatnot. And society is kind of what it is. Um, verse 40 sa 448 says that the Lord saw them toiling. You know what toiling is? It's having trouble, amen. It's complications. And he saw what they were doing. He knows that you're going through issues. He knows that, that, that you're on a journey right now. He knows that, 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 that you know, you're living life and doing what you do. And the Lord saw, saw that. Amen? And, and you know what the key is to, to life as far as your Christianity is, is concerned? Man, brother, you keep going. Notice in verse 48, he never tells them to stop rowing. He never tells them to turn around. He never tells them to, to, to everybody out of the boat. He never says that. He watches them. You know what that means for you? That means God Almighty is watching you. And you know what your role is with all this conspiracy stuff and everything that's going on in Hollywood and politics and stuff? That's not your role. That's not your role, rather. That's not what you need to be caught up in and, and worried about. And, and what about global warming and and, you know, what about the polar bears? You know, you know what we look forward to as Christians? A new heaven and a new earth. I, I, I read my Bible. You know what that Paul says about your body? He, he, he explains very specifically that this corruption, amen, must put on incorruption. You know what we're looking for? The blessed hope. You know where you find that? The first Thessalonians chapter 4. We call that the rapture when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and takes his bride away. Do you know what I'm, I'm not, this, this planet here, this world is not my home. This planet here, everything that's going on, there are not, there are a lot of beautiful things on this. I get it. There's, I've been in North Carolina. And man, I've been to California. I've been to Hawaii. There are beautiful places on this planet. But man, at the same time, don't you recognize the troubles? Uh, the Bible says that, 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 that there were uh, uh, toiling in verse 48. And the wind was contrary unto them. The, the world's going one way, and it's going that way. And, and you know what you're supposed to be doing? The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate, and you're going that way. And God sees that there's, 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 there's trouble there, and yeah, man, it, it can get, sometimes it can get kind of lonely. And yeah, you know what you need to do? Pray for the right people to come into your life. I can't tell you how many, I had a lot of friends. And unfortunately, you know, you ever heard that that deal? Well, well, you know, well, your mom, your parents are like, well, don't hang out with the bad. You know, I was the bad guy, and they were the bad guy. We were all in agreement, amen. Birds of a feather flock together. And then when I had gotten saved, I, I was like, well, Lord, who else believes? Is there anybody else that believes this stuff? And and the Lord's like, oh yeah. And I remember when I was still in the military, I, I had I had prayed, Lord, if there are these people, can you please bring them into my, can you show me who these guys are? Because I, I don't see them. And slowly but surely, Lord started bringing individuals into my life. And I remember going to church in San Diego, California, Lighthouse Baptist Church. Hey Amen. As a Roman Catholic, that was the first time I had just gotten saved and I'm coming into this church and all, all these guys were in the military. They had a big military ministry. And I remember asking those guys, hey, fellas, you were saved? And they're like, yeah. And, and I'm like, you're a Christian? And they say, yeah. And you're saved too? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, man, you're all in the military? You're all in the Navy? And they're like, yeah, yeah, Barnett, we're all in the military. What's up? I said, well, man, I mean, wh where have you all been? Because I've been in the military for two and a half years. I've been in the Navy. I don't remember seeing all you Christians. Where have you been? And you know what they said? Interesting. You know what they said? They said, uh, Barnett, we've been here the whole time. Where have you been? And I'm like, oh, no, I was on the, I was on, the, I was on the dark side. Hey, listen, there are a lot of these conspiracies going on, and man, you can watch, you know, video after video about, you know, everything that's, I guess, supposedly going on, and you can, you can drive yourself crazy, and man, trying to figure these things out. Um, but that Bible says you got a role. You're supposed to be in the boat, and you know what you're supposed to be doing. One day at a time and just 
moving, moving forward. The Lord said, I'm going I'm to meet you on the other side. And you know what's cool about that? He didn't even, he, he, verse 48, you know who shows up, right? The Lord shows up. You know who's going to show up real soon? The Lord's going to show up. You say, when's he going to show up? Well, are you toiling now? Is there a wind going contrary to you and your beliefs and your Christianity? Are, 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 are do, you, do you feel that there are people that don't love Jesus Christ? You think this, you think this country is, is a Christian country? They're not a Christian country, man. This, this United States of America is a, is, a, is a country with Christians in it. I'll give you that. But man, this world hates your Savior. It hates this book. It makes laws and regulations. Man, you got states that you can't meet. Amen. Nah, thank God, I, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is liberty, and we, and they got for the for the for the governor in, in in Florida. He he deemed that our churches were essential, and so we're wise about how we do business, but we still have church. Amen. Glory to God for that. Uh, verse forty eight, and he saw them toiling and rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night. You know they say, they say that fourth watch, there's four watches, you know, if you know, you know about how that works. There's, there's four watches in the night, all right? And then the last one, right before the dawn, they say it's darkest right before the dawn. And, and at that fourth watch, amen, in the fourth watch, we're in the church age. And on the fourth watch, the Bible says in verse 48, that uh, the Lord comes, amen, he said, he came unto them. You, when it's the darkest part, the darkest part of the night, that Bible says, the Lord came unto them. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to leaving this place, amen. And that sounds crazy because you watch so much television and you watch the Avengers and you see Thanos snapping his fingers and, you know, everybody disappears. And what that is, if, if Paul talks about the devil being the god of this world, the devil knows what's going on. The devil knows the Bible more than you know it. Amen? And the sad part about it, he's showing you in plain sight what's about to take place. And every movie you ever watch, whether you watch Mission Impossible or you watch the uh, Marvel deals and, uh, you know, uh, all these different, uh, all full of these little conspiracies that are going on. And, and the devil basically just tells you, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. There's an Antichrist coming. There's a Mark coming. Right now, you can't go into stores or, or, or different uh, places there without a, without a mask on, right? And then if you ever read Revelation chapter um, 13, over there in verse 17 and 18, it talks about a mark. And no man might buy or sell unless he have that mark. Amen. On the number of his name. And so you see all these signs. I went into a store the other day and it says, you can't come in without a mask. And what's coming? Well, you won't be able to come in without a mark. Amen. And you got all these guys like Bill Gates talking about, well... Uh, unless you get these vaccines and now you're talking about chips and doing different things like that and uh, in California they said the governor of California said if you don't have a vaccine you won't be able to go to the stadiums and the sporting events so you know is that the mark now do they have it here I know they got the flu you got to have the flu shots you got to have your immunizations and stuff is that it pastor is, is that calm down no it's not it because all this stuff takes place after the church is gone, amen? And in Revelation chapter 3, talks about the latest in church age. You know what's in Revelation chapter 4? John gets taken up to the third heaven, amen? Taken up to paradise, just like Paul did. And you know what that is? That's John. That's the disciple that Jesus loved. You know what that's a type of? That's a type of the church leaving up out of here. Amen. And then after that, you'll read about, you know, all hell breaks loose. Revelation chapter six, the Antichrist comes and death and hell and all the four horsemen, all that crazy stuff, all the stuff you've ever seen from Steven Spielberg and, and the devils walking around, the aliens and all this stuff, the walking dead, they're getting you conditioned. Amen. So you're a Christian and the entrance of thy word giveth light. It gives understanding to the simple. So you don't have to walk around here like a chicken with your head off, head cut off because you're safe. If you're saved. But you, you got to read your Bible. And you know what the Bible says? About the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them. 
And Jesus Christ is coming, and he's going to take his bride away. And you know what that is? That should be good news to you, knowing that this world might be going to hell in a handbasket, and, and, and there are not a whole lot of going on, and there's people confused and, and upset about certain things. And, and yeah, there's tri trials and tribulations. That's, there's uh, toiling and, 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 and the winds blowing. I, I get that. And conspiracies, and what about... I get that, but you're saved. Amen. God's given you, if, if you want it, as a Christian, the peace that passes all understanding. To give you a sound mind, amen, and power, right? That's, that's the love of God that he has for you. But, and if you're not going to take time out of your schedule to get in that book, then you know what that's going to happen? You, you're, all you got left is what this world has to offer. And this world has nothing to offer you. Hey, if you're not saved, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, man, this is just the beginning of sorrows, Matthew chapter 4 to 24. And if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, that Bible says you're lost, you're undone, amen, you're an enemy of God. You are separated from God right now. Uh, John chapter 3 says that the wrath of God abides on you right now. And, and it won't be that after a thousand years everybody dies and you will be resurrected and we'll figure out if you go to heaven or hell after that. Um, Lord Jesus Christ says you're condemned already without Jesus Christ. Without being saved, the Bible said, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. If you never got saved, if you never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you need to do that before it's eternally too late. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. And yes, Lord, I know there are a lot of conspiracies and whatnot, and there are things going on, and there are things going on behind the scenes, but as Christians, we're, we're not to worry about that. Amen. Uh, I know the Bible says, you say, be of good cheer. I know you said that you've overcome the world. And so we need to remember that and trust in that. And, and thank you so much for dying and paying the full price for our sin. And, and if there is somebody here listening to this message that has never trusted Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior, I pray that they would do that right now uh, with a sincere heart, that they would bow their head and receive your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. Maybe they would pray something similar to this. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear Lord, I know that, uh, that you died for me, that you shed your precious blood, that you were buried and rose again to pay the full price for my sin. And the best, in the best way I know how, I'm asking you, Jesus Christ, to forgive me of my sin, to come into my heart, to be my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Boy, I, I hope I hope you uh, I hope you trust Christ. I hope you're saved, because if you think that life now is challenging, and you think that based on what you're seeing on television, and your liberties are going away every day, if you think it's tough now, you have no idea what's coming. And then you know, say we're trying to scare us, Pastor. I'm trying to wake you up. And if I can preach the hell out of you, I'll preach the hell out of you. Jesus Christ loved you enough to die for you. Christian, now is not the time to play games. Get serious. Amen. Get in your Bible. And you've got a lot of people around you that God put in your life that need help. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by him. All right, so you guys have a good day, man. Love you. Uh, I'll see you when we see you. Stay encouraged. Even so, come Lord Jesus.